Everybody that loves the Lord, say amen. 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 Lord God, we thank you for Calvary. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Lord God, thank you for the Holy Ghost sent from heaven. And our Lord, breathe on us today. I ask you, Lord, to breathe on us. Pour that hot oil of the Holy Ghost, the precious blood of the loving Savior. Open up the windows of heaven today, Lord. Pour out a blessing. There'll be not enough room to receive it. Lord, we ask for this. Bless your man. Bless Brother Lawson. Bless this dear flock of God. We ask you for that. We don't deserve it, but You've designed it. Lord, we love you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. And all the Lord's people say it. Thank the Lord. Amen. I'm going to obey the Lord today. <clears throat> See what the Lord has for us. Good to see. You. It's always a blessing to come by about, about twice a year and get that phone call. Brother McNeese. In the exact same call for 15 years, twice a year. We need you to come preach for us. My secretary will call you and make the arrangements with the motel. We love and appreciate Brother Lawson. He brings me by twice a year to drop some more study notes off for him to prepare him for his series, the Sunday school series. I do a lot of studying it. <laughs> uh, y'all know the story when I was in Thailand and they were talking to me uh, on the other side of the world. They said, you know, Charles Lawson, we hear him preach. I said, yes. I said, y'all ever heard me? No, we don't know you. We know... Charles Lawson. <laughs> Brother Allen, kid, stand up, Brother Allen. He's a friend of mine. His pastor is Joey Wampler. They're on vacation in Gatlinburg, and they came by. And uh, Brother Allen's a good preacher. His pastor is Joey Wampler, and I encourage you to look him up on YouTube. Uh, he's a great Bible teacher. And... Uh, in my computer where I've got them saved, uh, Brother Lawson, and then under him I have Pastor Wampler. And I have to send study notes to both these men. But thank you, Brother Kidd. And uh, uh, the people here we love and appreciate so much. Brother Tommy has been special to us since the Lord called him to preach. And uh, it's good to see Brother Bobby Stewart. Brother Bobby, stand up just for a minute. I'm okay, Brother... I'm just, I'm just visiting. Uh, <laughs> Brother Bobby, God, uh, he started a church and built a great church and a Christian school up above Wartburg in Sunbright, Tennessee. And God's given Brother Stewart a ministry to America. It's kind of unique. Brother Bobby got to preach in Washington, D.C., in the nation's capital not long ago. The senators there asked him to preach in their service that they have on Wednesdays. And Brother Stewart's been in several state capitals and God's given him a unique burden. And he's not so much trying to change laws or change America as God's given him a burden, listen closely, to win the souls of our politicians. And he's in and out of capitals and he's, and he's got a burden to build friendships and relationships and get these men saved. I thought that, Brother Lawson, might be the best way to affect America. And, uh, and Brother Stewart, God's given, I've been his friend nearly 20 years and watched him build a great church and then God's put him in this ministry. Thank you, Brother Bobby. And uh, who else can I recognize here while I'm up here? Brother? I've already dropped the study notes off for Brother Lawson. Another few months he'll be... <laughs> Lord, help us. 
all joking aside, uh, go to Ephesians 6. And I want to show you, I just, I'm going to obey the Lord today. I know Brother Lawson, I believe I, you can remain seated because I go seven different directions at the same time. And I believe in honoring the Word of God, but I, I liable to have you standing all day. I'm not sure how I'll do it. You can be seated. Uh, let me show you something, Ephesians 6. And I'm coming back to this in a minute. Verse 18 says, praying always. Now, the Lord's put something in my heart. He's got a burden for prayer today. For this church. Do you know, do you know our president declared today a written proclamation? Today, a national day of prayer. A lot of things could be said about a lot of things, but God's God's still God. He's running He's running everything just like He wants it, and He's and He and, and He sees what the enemy's doing. While you're there in Ephesians, I want you to go over to Colossians two for a moment. I'll tell you what I think about what the Lord's given Brother Lawson. I believe the Lord's give your preacher a unique ministry of teaching and preaching in the last days. And God's give him a unique ment. Now, God's opened that door. Now, there's 10,000 preachers that would love to have as many followers, but God's only one. God runs this thing. I'm going to tell you all something, and you better holler amen or I'll be watching for you. God's, God's raised your preacher up in these hours, in this nation, and bigger than this nation, for this generation. And he is combating devils and doctrines really in a way I don't know anybody else. God's called anybody else to quite do that. Colossians 2 says... In verse 8, and this is what I think of, and I think about what the Lord got Brother Lawson doing in these hours. The studies that he does, the preaching that he does, and how God, now I told you, 10,000 preachers would love to be all over YouTube and all over the world. But see, your preacher ain't looking for a spotlight, he's just a preacher. He's just preaching. And, and the only thing that really works out there is sensation and all these other boys are trying sensationalism. Amen. But God gave us a veteran preacher Amen. with sound doctrine yes, and he's probably the only fella that ain't, that, that ain't trying to get money out of it. Y'all talk to me. It's not about his ego and it ain't about, it ain't about money. I just feel, I feel unusual today. Y'all doing all right? I'm going to obey the Lord. How's that sound? Huh? This church, this church, I'd like to see God pour a Holy Ghost hot oil on it. I'm perfectly comfortable operating with your preacher. I believe he's perfectly comfortable for me to obey the Lord today. I don't even have to look at him to see if that's okay. I already know how, where his heart is. This church needs a good dose of Holy Ghost hot oil run out over. Now, a lot of folk come by Brother Lawson, and then when they realize he ain't into the sensational prophecy... Y'all ain't helping me. He's in the scriptural prophecy. You ain't supposed to make money off a of prophecy. Y'all better talk to me. This, I'm using plain English today. Prophecy ought to not give you a sensation. It ought to give you sanctification. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. 
It doesn't say he leaves the local church and leaves a pastor and runs all over the country chasing the next sensational what they found under the seventh toenail of the fifth dragon. <laughs> Y'all better talk to me. I'm an evangelist to the churches and I know what my job is. Now there's some of them come digging around and when they figure out that he's not into sensationalism, but he's actually a pastor of a church, got sound doctrine, and he's a preaching it so sinners will get saved and people will get right, not to sell books. He can capitalize on these things, folks. Hope you don't mind me talking about you, preacher. That's what I'm doing. It's the trade-off for all them study notes that I got. <laughs> Prophecy ain't supposed to sell, it's supposed to convict. Yeah. Did I read the verse in Colossians yet? Okay, y'all gotta help me. I have AADD and seven other things that I really enjoy. I refuse to medicate anything. Name them all. Give them all names. You'll never be lonely. You'll never be lonely. <laughs> Colossians 2, and it's verse 8. And in verse 15, you're going to find the word spoil twice. Spoil means you go, you invade, you conquer, and you take all the good stuff they got. I'm about to run what I'm about to do. Woo! Y'all be on the defensive if you want to. My, my, I'm on the winning team. We're on the offensive. We took the ball away. Amen. We're charging the finish line. Chapter 2, verse 8. And, and I think this is what the Lord has Brother Lawson doing in these hours. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. What God's called your preacher to do is combat this horde, this flood, this tidal wave sweeping over our planet. Take, and, here, and here's my burden. This is my burden for my generation, this verse. They're being, they're being defeated, ransacked, and carried off captive through the philosophies that hell's pumping out. And vain deceit, and you're in a university city, and they're full of witches and wizards and new agers and pagans, all of them are, all your university cities are. And I hope you understand, I'm not worshiping Brother Lawson, I'm not making a God out of Brother Lawson, but I'm a given honor where honors do. And I feel led as an evangelist to the churches to put a burden in this church. You keep the sensationalism out and you bring the spirituality in. Now that wasn't, for, that wasn't a rebuke to him. I'm talking to y'all. Because that's the route he runs. He could take and capitalize on this thing very few men get that much of a spotlight and, and don't and, and don't where to make it about their self. Amen. Thank God you got a preacher, the spotlight's on him, and he's just being the same preacher he's always been. Mm. This is the burden for our generation. They've been spoiled. They've been defeated, taken captive, and carried away by the philosophies and the vain deceit of this hour. And if you knew what the Colossian church was dealing with, it's what we're dealing with in this hour. It's this high stuff coming from the high powers of hell. Beware lest any man spoil you. And then he quoted this verse in Sunday school. In verse 9, speaking of Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's in Christ. If you center 
and your theology around God the Father, you'll be a Calvinist. If you center your theology around God the Spirit, you'll be a charismatic. But if you put your focus on what the Father and the Spirit are focused on, if you put it on the Son, you'll look like a Christian. You'll be a Christian. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Let's go to that second spoil. It's down in verse 15. Mm. Let's bring in verse 14 because Calvary's just jumping up and down right there and we don't want to bypass it. Somebody might need to shout in the Holy Ghost this morning, amen. Don't want to leave this verse out. Blotting out, thank God. Woo. Well, verse 13 said you've had a spiritual circumcision and said he's forgiven you all trespasses. And verse 14 said, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Mm. Friend of mine shared a, a pastor from South Carolina, Brother Ezel, Brother Kid. He shared this the other day. There's a little group of us fellowship and uh, during the week, and he shared this thought uh, out of that verse, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. He reached over there in Revelation 12, the accuser of our brethren. By the way, the devil only accuses brethren. Is he been on you this week because he knows you ain't his? He only accuses brethren. Amen. He'll never tell a lost man that he's lost and he'll never tell a saved man that he's saved. <laughs> Woo! My friend in South Carolina said, said the accuser come by to visit him the other day and had that list. Again. And, and he said to the devil, where'd you get that? You had to go by Calvary. That's the only list that's all been nailed to the cross. <laughs> Woo! Hey, when he comes to accuse you, he's got to go by Calvary first and get your list. It's been nailed to that cross. <laughs> he's got to visit bloody Calvary. Amen. That's why he's so mad by the time he gets to you. He re- he's been reminded of how he's been overthrown. Amen. Glory. Mm. I'm feeling dangerous today, preacher. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! And there's our second spoil. Look in verse 15, Colossians 2. And having spoiled principalities and powers. <laughs> principalities and powers. That's them fellers and them forces and them foes that your preacher talks about every Sunday. That's who he's talking about. And I thought about this, and Brother Lawson, the mean you know, make a lot of other preachers nervous talking about all that. It don't make me nervous. I'm somewhere going, get them, preacher, get them. Sick them, tell on them, tell it. And I notice this little line here, Brother Bobby. He made a show of them openly. So I want to encourage you, Pastor, for just as an evangelist to the churches, speaking to the, one of the elders of the church, let me encourage you. Keep making an open show of it. Run them out there and show everybody. That's what our Savior done. He defeated the principalities and power. Y'all ain't helping me. And he made a show of them openly. I've got to go to Rome just because Brother Stewart's been over there with me. Just because we go to Albania. By the way, our second church has started in Albania earlier today. I'm about to run. I'm about to smack three people. Look like they enjoy gossip too much. Five people that ain't tithed in the year. And seven people that never come back on Sunday night. And then, then I'm just going to, hey man. Gonna run, thank God. Brother Tim Lord, one of our good missionaries out of Florida, 
has started our second church in Albania six hours ago. <laughs> that ought to make y'all happy. That's where Paul left off. He said, I pre- Romans 15, I preached fully round about unto Illyricum. Our interpreter over there named Illyria after the Illyrian society. That was Albania. It used to be old Macedonia. That's where Paul left. He, he said, I never got no further than that. What about this? God let me and a few other boys get over there right here at the end of the church age. We're picking up where Paul left off. And get to go through Rome and we go down there down downtown ancient Rome and where them Caesars and kings when they'd be returning from some great battle and they'd have those kings or princes that they'd defeated, have them chained to their chariot and they'd drag them down through town, make parade them through town. That's what our Savior done when he came back from Calvary. Y'all ain't helping me. Psalm 24, the last two verses. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. This king of glory shall come. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. Amen. <laughs> Strong and mighty in battle. That's it. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of it said it twice. The king, because there are two times he's going back into heaven. He done went once, amen. That's when he, 2,000 years ago, he went back into heaven and he's carrying the blood. Well, he's going in another time, but he'll be carrying the bride. Mm, bless the Lord. I just want to encourage you, preacher. Jesus made a show of the enemy openly. And you just help yourself. And keep it up and make an open show. Drag them through there and make everybody look at all their lies and all their, and all their desires. Amen. You better believe the enemy's trying to take over. Is it Revelation 12? He rageth. He knoweth that he hath but a short time. And everything he's a doing in this hour. Oh, they'll all see this. I'll lose 10 good meetings. Amen. But I'll pick up three. <laughs> I'll send him a bill if anything gets shortchanged in there. Brother Lawson, he'll help me. Huh? Tell you something, honey, in this hour we live, you better believe we're in a great battle with principalities and powers. Now here's my burden. Go back to Ephesians 6. It tells us what to do with this. Y'all doing all right? Do you know the first three chapters of Ephesians tells the Christian about his heavenly, his heavenly position? Heavenly places. Y'all read Ephesians? First three chapters, heavenly places. And then the last three chapters takes you over to your hellish places. Hellish powers. Ephesians 1 talks about them heavenly places. And then Ephesians 6, we're over there with them hellish powers. Look at there in Ephesians 6. Verse 12, we wrestle. Mm, You better figure that out. We wrestle. Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Here they are again, against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what I've been talking about. It's what he talks about. Verse 13, there's that whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil, and having done all to stand. He tells you how, verse 14, your loins girt about with truth, your feet shod, the preparation of the gospel. Above all, taking the shield of faith, there's that helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the word of God, but verse 18 for I'm very interested in praying always 
with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there in two with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Look what Paul said in verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. You pray for your preacher, God will help him to have that utterance. When you pray for me and other evangelists and preachers, pastors, missionaries, when you pray for us, Brother Stewart in these state capitals and in the nation's capital, when you, when you pray for preachers, you pray that God gives us an utterance. The gospel's a mystery. Only the Holy Ghost can make it real to somebody. And you gotta have that boldness. Now you go to your little modern mega church, get your little contemporary, your feminine little, little old feminine mouthpiece of a cornet. There ain't a trumpet in that crowd. They're all little old short, muted, mellow cornets. Help me now. See, the Antichrist got his band together. The image of the beast, 90 foot statue, the three Hebrew children. When you hear the music fall down and worship, you go study that band. There ain't a trumpet in there. It's replaced by a cornet. I had a man with a music degree tell me the difference. He said a cornet is not big as a trumpet. It ain't as loud as a trumpet. He said it's a muted trumpet. And it gives a mellow sound. Well, half of y'all been green around the gills for 20 minutes. I'll go ahead and bless your heart. You like them little muted mellow preachers. Them little Sunday morning American guys. Curly hair, white and teeth, women's jewelry. Little effeminate, little effeminate boy. Y'all ain't helping me. I ain't got no pretty Sunday morning sermons. That outline book flew out the window 30 years ago. You should have come to my church. At Christmas, I preached on hell. Easter, I preached on how come I ain't seen y'all since Christmas. Amen. Fourth of July, I preached on tithing. Mother's Day, I preached on your mama didn't die for you. Jesus died for you. It was kind of a mess, Pastor. That's just the way. That little boldly. I'll tell you something. There's a trumpet. That's a trumpet that called me out of hell. It wasn't a little cornet called me out of hell. When them old timey women used to shout, that was a trumpet I heard. It wasn't no little muted, mellow, little or half cut off cornet. Help me now. Some of y'all ain't been around real shouting. That's why them charismatics suck you in so quick. You get around all them limp-wristed nasal voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You ever get around a Holy Ghost shout, you'd realize you probably need to get born again while you ain't had no discernment about you. Y'all talk to me now. You may have to edit this one off of YouTube, Pastor, this one. <laughs> Praying always. Let me tell you my burden for this church, that God fill y'all with the Holy Ghost. He's give your, listen, I need you to understand something. He's give your preacher a ministry bigger than all of us. It's bigger than him, it's bigger than y'all. God's put a trumpet into his hands and his mouth and it blows out bigger than this congregation, bigger than Fountain City. You better hear me. And God, and, and, and if you think I'm kissing up to him, you can think what you want to. Well, I love him, and I don't care what you think, but I'm telling you something, you better hear me. He's one of the few men God could trust that he wouldn't make this about himself. Y'all understand, he could take that just a little turn and there'd be 2,000 people in here. He could take a little twist and make a lot of money. Write two books, and, and I wish he would write some books, but, but, he, but he ain't, 
he could he could capitalize on this ministry, God, but he's keeping it about Jesus. He's keeping it about the second coming. He's keeping it about truth. Y'all hear me? You better get filled with the Holy Ghost and have revival around here. He can't have revival for you. Y'all better have revival and get filled with the Holy Ghost. You better, you better match this church with his ministry. Amen. Good. You men better get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You youngins better get sanctified and separate from Egypt. You're going to drop off to hell sitting under, sitting under one of the greatest preachers in our generation and you'll slide right into hell. Amen. You young couples better turn into Christians. In a good church like this, the young couples can let the older couples because it's their church. You were born into it. You young couples better get full of the Holy Ghost. Y'all better assume the responsibility of this church. You better pick up Brother Lawson and Sister Lawson. You better pick up some of the gray hairs that's been carrying this church and you young couples, you better start carrying all of them. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ought to pick them up. Everybody in here under the 40s and 30s and 20s, you ought to pick up all these older ones been carrying you all these years and you ought to start carrying them. Half you letting Brother Lawson do your Christian life for you. You better get you a Bible. You better get you a prayer closet. You better realize there's more principalities and powers than just what he's a fighting. There's enemies after your home, after your children. That man won't be able to go no further than y'all are gonna be able to pick him up and carry him. What about the Lord not letting him leave us? Have we, have we had a real good proper Thanksgiving service around here? How many prayers went up in the time that his heart looked like we might gonna lose him? How many prayers went up? Have we had one real good dedication Sunday thanking God that he answered our prayers and our preachers looking better than ever? Have we? I hadn't been over 240 pounds in three years. And something, I misbehaved last week or something, Bobby. I got on the scale and I was over 240. I've gone into a deep depression. You can see it's bothering me. <laughs> I'm gonna find a Chinese buffet and then a barbecue both today <laughs> and get a little self-therapy on this depression that I'm in. But when I come in and I seen Brother Lawson, and he's fleshed out pretty good. Sister Lawson, I noticed his face and his little belly. And you know what I've done? I thank God for it. I said, he's feeling good. Look at that. He's feeling good. He's feeling out. He ain't a skeleton over there laying around about to die. We're against skinny people, ain't we, Tommy? We're against skinny people. <laughs> Amen. You gonna live and die in America and just drink tree bark? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Slam fast, we can fix all that. You got disorders. <laughs> skinny people. And if, and if it naturally in your family to be skinny, Brother Howard, work on it. Ask God for grace. <laughs> Ask God to help you. Those of you that are naturally skinny, the Lord will help you. You ain't gotta stay that way. I was thanking God that, have y'all thanked God around here properly? I mean, have you took a whole month, maybe a whole, have you done, and just thanked God that he ain't? Boy, we know how to beg God when we're in trouble. But 90% of us walk on down the road after he's healed nine lepers. We got what we needed and we're gone. But that one who was a Samaritan, he turned around and he came back and he fell at the feet of Jesus and he said, I'm here to say thank you. I want to thank you. 
And the Bible said that man was made whole. What about nine were healed, but one was restored? <laughs> What's the difference in them nine healed, but said, and then he was made whole? Healing is when God takes care of what's wrong with you. Being made holy gives you everything back that was right about you. I think you can see what I'm saying. God will heal all that stuff that's wrong. What about he makes you back like his little baby? Made whole. It's one thing for God to fix your past. How about he goes a double portion and then fixes your future? One thing, he pulled us out of hell. And then he gave us all of heaven. What about, what about, do y'all see what I'm, I ain't smart enough to talk about this stuff, but you're smart enough to understand what I'm trying to talk about. What about the Lord answering them prayers you've prayed? Well, I'm standing here and I'm looking back through the years. I'm thanking him for some prayers I've prayed. And then what about the Lord saying, and you know, I'm gonna go do three or four things you hadn't even asked for. <laughs> That's made whole stuff. Mm. Everybody go to Jeremiah 2 and hurry. Jeremiah 2. I just need to say this. Y'all doing all right? I just need to say this. We don't need to forget what God's done. <laughs> Jeremiah 2. It's verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they're gone far from me, have walked after vanity, and are become vain. Well, that word was over in Colossians, vain deceits. Verse 6. They forgot everything the Lord done for them. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up? Hey, some of y'all were way down, but he's brought you up. And he wasn't done. He said, let's talk about some things. Where, where's the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness? Mm. Through a land of deserts and of pits. I'm in the middle of the verse, but I need to stop and ask you, have y'all forgot some of them deserts? You didn't think you was gonna survive? You're here, ain't you? Amen. How about some of them pits you was hung up in them slime pits and a, and a nail-scarred hand reached down and hauled you up out of that horrible pit? Huh? You didn't die in the wilderness. Let's keep reading. Through a land of deserts and a pit, through a land of drought. <laughs> Woo, I'm about to tag myself out, shout for 30 minutes, come back and see if I can get tagged back in. <laughs> and of the shadow of death. Anybody here walk through the shadow of death? But look at you. You're here. <laughs> through a land that no man passed through. <laughs> He's brought you through where no man, nobody ever come through before. Y'all ain't helping me. I will fire all you old dead Baptists and hire the rest if y'all don't help me. And where no man dwelt. And I brought you in. <laughs> I, got, I mean, I just need y'all to just think on it for a little while. Have y'all forgot the Lord? Where he brought you through, where he brought you from. My, my precious bride's here. Stand up, Jennifer. Brother Lawson may let you be on his YouTube next week. Stand up, my three kids. See, we went nearly a decade and, and, and no, couldn't have no babies. <laughs> and I was on a mountain in Sneedville. Thank you, family. I was on a mountain in Sneedville. And my little wife, and she's... She's the stable one. If y'all hadn't, that probably wasn't hard for you. <laughs> She's stable. She's the rock. 
But she had a heart like Rachel. Oh God, give me children or else I die. What's wrong with our generation when they want to kill babies and keep their figures? I done told you how we felt about skinny people. I was on a mountain in Sneedville. They put me up in a cabin and there's a prayer garden up there. And somebody didn't scribe verses on rocks and trees. It's a prayer garden where men of God went to pray. And I laid up there and I said, Lord, we can't go no further. And I know you'll give us grace that we don't have or give us babies that we don't have. You got to give us one or the other. <laughs> you got to give us grace or you got to give us babies. And I laid on that mountain, Brother Lawson, and I seen another mountain further away, higher. And I said, Lord, I'm stuck over here and I need to be over there. I said, you're the only one to get me from here to there. <laughs> and there's three of them now. Brother Stewart, you remember about five wives, about five years, your wife had the migraines and had them so bad in a dark room, shut down and still, dying with pain. And then God just lifted it. (laughs) And she wouldn't do all that stuff them other doctors was trying to tell her to do. Look at you now. I need y'all to look around at you now. Look, Brother Lawson's still here. We asked, didn't we? I need you to look back. You're not in that pit you used to be. You're not in that desert you used to be. Some of you ain't just been healed. You've been made whole. He didn't just answer your prayers. Then he answered some of his prayers that he prayed for you. Stuff you don't even know about. (laughs) <laughs> oh Lord oh my I wouldn't try to concoct anything I wouldn't try to cook anything up I, don't, I ain't God and I don't, I don't act like I'm God and I don't play God with his church I don't try to conjure nothing up nowhere at no time that's pretty wicked you try to manipulate the body of Christ for anything So what I'm telling you is ain't got nothing to do with me trying to, it's a burden from the Lord. <laughs> what if the Lord bubbled up a Holy Ghost hot oil revival in this place? I've been burdened for years about it every time I come by you. Preached here one night, one time three nights and it, it helped us but that's it. What if the Lord? Let me tell you something about all your teenagers. They need to get born again. Most teenagers need to get saved because they're lost. (laughs) Most young couples need to get sanctified because you ain't gonna survive another decade if God don't fill your marriage. And you better believe, honey, there's seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3 and it wasn't long and five of them's already went bad. If you think this church can't, the devil find a way to make it go south, go sour. I got a burden. We need to pray. We need the Lord. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna open up this altar. I know it's not closed. It never closes. But I'm gonna open up this altar. Won't sister come to the piano? Just softly play whatever's on your heart. I want everybody to stand. Make it easy to move. Oh my, the Lord. The Lord's got a burden for Temple Baptist flock. For this church, the Lord's got a burden. (laughs) The Lord's got a burden.
the Lord has a burden for this church. I'm not spiritual enough to have a good burden. The Lord has a burden. For your children, for your marriages, for sinners in this community that have died and go to hell if this church don't get on fire. Your preacher needs a spirit filled, a spirit filled Holy Ghost praying church to lift his arms as he preaches to this last generation. Oh, God help us. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, God, help us. <laughs>